conversation completely in another direction. So I only just want to mention that because that ex- when people say to me, why, why are scientists the way they are? Why won't they just, why won't they be scientists when it comes to these kinds of questions? Mm. And it's because it's going to take away one of their fundamental um, belief systems, and it's going to open the door up to more argument than they already have to deal with from creationists. Now, the great thing about this is it takes creationists out of the equation, too. It, it, it creates a whole third argument, which is the intervention theory, which I promote, and, and, it, and it goes back to Eric von Daniken, that, that we're here because super beings came on Earth and, and put us here. And the evidence for that is is really strong, very, very positive in many, many ways. And science doesn't want to deal with that. They just simply, science doesn't want to deal with that. Government doesn't want to deal with that. Religion doesn't want to deal with that. It changes the world as everybody understands it in what is now a very frightening kind of way. But, you know, it's the truth. And the truth until we start dealing with the truth, how can we actually move forward toward our ultimate destiny, whatever that is, until we understand and acknowledge where we really came from? I agree. I and, agree. And, and how we might how we might create a better existence for ourselves if we acknowledge these truths. Because, you know, let's face it, if we grow up to that point, maybe they will maybe that's what the, the aliens away. People say to me also, why don't the aliens just come out and, and say we're here and we're watching over you and we're experimenting on you and we're doing all these things um, and, and if you want to live better lives, here's what you need to do. Um, we, we need help. We're not a well put together species mentally, emotionally, psychologically. We've got problems collectively and individually. Maybe there's a way that that could be fixed or at least ameliorated and, and made better. None of that, I don't think, is going to happen until we are mature enough to acknowledge who they are and who we are. Mm. And so I think this is a, a real big, giant step in the direction of all humanity moving toward it, its true destiny. Uh, but we can't we can't take those first steps until we acknowledge who we are and where we came from. And I think this star child research is going to force that issue. And I think it, in the end, it's going to be great for all of us. So, what if we talk about like your timeline um, expectations? So how do you think this will un- unfold? If if we first look at it from the point of view, if everything goes as you expect it, uh, versus if things go totally the opposite way, problems. Uh, you know, uh, sticks in the wheel, et, et cetera. What's your timeline expectations on all this, Lloyd? Well, the really the first thing we have to do, and it's a good question, the first thing we have to do really is get the money so that we can get our geneticist working on a 454 machine, um, get the whole, the whole thing underway, basically, uh, so that he can start recovering whole huge chunks of the genome and put the whole thing together in a couple of months. So if we can get the money that we need, which is, again, a, a few million dollars. I mean, it, it doesn't grow on trees. But now that we have this, though, Hendrik, now that we have such a tremendous history-making deal and, and, the, and the movie, the documentary that will come out of this will be one of the most important documentaries Ever made, so you know that it's going to 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 make its money back and then some. So it's a good investment. It's a sound investment, and I think that we shouldn't have to wait more than a few weeks to find that person. And once we have that, then very in very short order, we can get uh, our our guy working on a four five four machine. Mm. And once he can do that, then we have a, a couple of months before completion, and then a, a two or three months of of initial analysis of the results should give us enough information to where we can have some completion in terms of the documentary. Here is where we know this is going to go. So I would say that everything could be wrapped up and done and you could be looking at the film maybe even by the end of this year. I know Hmm. that seems fast, fast, but if if you look at where things are right now and and actually that's a lot slower than we thought when we thought it was just going to be a smaller percentage of difference uh now that we know that it's going to be much much larger again based on the percentage of the recovery of the initial recovery which was about half and half 
he said that that won't necessarily hold up, but if it's anything like that, it's going to be an awful lot of work involved in recovering. I, I mean, excuse me, in interpreting those unknown those unknown strings that are not recognized yet in the NIH um, database. Mm. And really, what it amounts to is just putting them in into the database. But you have to figure out what they are, where the stop-start codons are. There's a lot of things that go in to to figuring out what you have. So uh, th with you know, building them into genes and chromosomes and all that. It's, it's a complicated thing. It's going to require other people besides our guy. Um, so it's going to be an expensive proposition, uh, oh, well over a million dollars just to do that part of it. But still, it's, it, it's exciting. It can be done. It will be done. Everything is in place really right now except the money. I see. Everything is really in place except money. So we're, we're pressing forward with that as hard as we can. And, uh, you know, timelines in terms of um, t new technology as well. I, I think, uh, let's see here, was it a couple of days ago and I uploaded an article here where uh, J. Craig Venter and all the guys who were behind the human, decoding the human genome back in around 2000, 2001, uh, right. also talked about uh, basically development of new computer systems uh, as from their point of view to help them decode all the data. They have, as you said, Lloyd, they have tons amount of data out there to kind of decode and put everything to piece this big genetic puzzle together, so to speak. And I think that from their point of view, uh, it, it's really going to li lie with uh, the future of computing, not the future of genomics as such, but it has to do that, with the computers. That's exactly right. That is exactly what our guy said. He said, the problem here is not recovering the base pairs. That's a done deal yeah. with the 454. Whatever those base pairs are, see, that's the beauty of the. That's why in 2003 we could not get a recovery of the nuclear DNA because the base pair strings that were put into the solution were human only, only human DNA. And because we knew the mother was human, so you didn't have to put chimp in, you didn't have to put gorilla in, you, you had to put base pairs designed to recover only human nuclear DNA. And it couldn't be done because the father's DNA is so incredibly different. Mm. So now we can recover all of his base pairs, but the, the arrangement of those base pairs, and really we're only talking about four. There are four base pairs. That's all. All of life is made up of four, four base pairs, four nucleotides. So those four are going to be in arrangements that have never been seen before. So it's the computers, exactly that, the computing that's going to have to figure out what those combinations are and how they compare and how they differ with what's already in the human genome. Hmm. So it's all doable, and, it, and I did not know that there had been a, a step forward in that, but there are step forwards all the time in all of technology like this. But our geneticist was very clear that once the recovery is made, specialists who do that, that analysis with the computers are going to have to be brought in to do to interpret what we have. Yeah. So um, it, it's it's all part of the process. But but I asked him the same question, the timeline question, and he said if everything were to go right, if within a matter of a few weeks, if let's say by the end of April, by the start of May, we we had the money, we know we're we're full speed ahead, we can start hiring people, get the four four five four machine, lease, do the whole everything we have to do, then by the end of the year most of it can be done, if not all of it, and uh, you know, maybe have the film out by Christmas or something like that. Very, very exciting stuff. That's very, very promising. And uh, yeah. maybe as a side note here, I don't know, Lloyd, in, in terms of uh uh, connections between the uh, the apes and and uh, modern human or the uh, uh, Homo habilis uh, species here. The, uh, from the the Telegraph here a couple of days ago now they re uh, came out with a new article uh, which claims that they're going to unveil another one of these missing links now in uh, in the coming week here. I don't know if you heard about this yet, but yeah, uh, I did. In fact, I t I talked about that briefly on a big radio show that we have here called Coast to Coast last night. Right. right. Um, yes, I did. And, and in fact, we put something up on my uh, on my uh, Lloyd Pie uh, website last night. If anybody listening wants to see a brief analysis of this, you know what's going to be a huge story come Thursday when they when they release it. Um, if you if you want to see a, a very brief analysis that I think will help you understand what it's supposed.